Today, I'm going to take a look at a new entrant in the super fast wide aperture lens category. It's sort of a obscure segment of the market traditionally populated by extremely expensive lenses. The TT Artisan 50mm f0.95 lens joins an even smaller subset of such lenses, one that the average photographer can actually afford to buy. And it comes nicely packaged, so I wanted to show what that looks like. Um, very nice, nice box, graphics, and inside we get a um, little booklet. Um, that's the warranty card, and we get a little lens cleaning cloth. And here's the here's the lens itself. It's um, get rid of the bag there. So there it is. And right off the bat, this lens feels <laughs> very well built. The weight is what um, strikes me first. Pretty hefty for a, a small package, <laughs> kind of like me. And according to the specs, it weighs around 1411 grams, 14 and a half ounces. I'm measuring 450 grams with a lens cap, more on that later. So it's nearly a pound. That's really what gives it a feeling of substance. The focusing action is wonderfully smooth. It's actually better uh, than a lot of much more expensive lenses that um, I've owned. The barrel and movements really are very nicely engineered. And this is particularly important because this lens is completely manual. There's no contacts, so no electronic communication between it and your camera. No exif data. So just like in the days of yore, <laughs> you'll have to take a notebook with you if you want to keep track of your settings. Markings are are very nice. They're, they're nicely engraved rather than just painted on. Now, this is an APS-C lens designed for a cropped sensor, DX in Nikon parlance. So if we're talking a Nikon Z camera, we're talking Z50 or ZFC models. These are Nikon's mirrorless APS-C cameras. So to avoid confusion, APS-C sensors differ among different manufacturers, anywhere from 20.7 by 13.8 millimeters to 28.7 by 19.1 millimeters, compared to full frame, or if we're talking Nikon, FX, which measures 36 by 24 millimeters. Since my recent trade-in purge to buy the Nikon Z9 full frame camera, I'm all Nikon, so for the sake of this video, Nikon APS-C or DX measures 23.5 by 15.7 millimeters. And in this video, I'll be primarily testing this lens again, advertised in it as an APS-C lens that can be pressed into service with full frame cameras, I'll be testing it with my FX full frame cameras. How will the TT Artisan F0.95 <laughs> dreamy bokeh beast fare with the full frame sensors of those cameras? Stick around to find out. Hi, Ray here. I'm glad you could join me for this test of the TT Artisan APS-C 50mm f0.95 lens. In order to answer the main questions posed in the intro, I'm going to primarily let the images from the camera speak for themselves. Everyone's interpretation is going to be different. No different from what uh, different folks take from any photographic image, really. And I'm not here to try and sway anyone in any particular way. Full disclosure, TD Artisan sent me one of these little lenses to try out. They didn't ask me to portray it in any particular uh, light, and I wouldn't accept any such conditions. They won't see or vet this video in any way before it's published to my channel. No money changed hands, and, as usual, my opinions are my own. Okay, so my evaluation is not particularly scientific, shall we say. Again, uh, I hope the results of my tests, if you will, speak for themselves. I've just been wandering around with this lens in my bag for the last couple of weeks, and uh, if I did resist any request from the company, it's been to rush this video to completion. I wanted to try it out for both stills and video in different circumstances. Let's say, first off, this isn't a Nikkor Noct or a Leica Noctilux. 
the f0.95 lenses from those manufacturers. The latest 58mm Z-mount knocked lens was created by Nikon shortly after the launch of Nikon's mirrorless cameras, the Z6 and Z7, to showcase the design options made possible by the Z-mount, with its 55mm inner diameter and short 16mm flange focal distance, and the knocked retails for 7996.95 US. Leica's 50mm Noctilux M goes for an eye-watering $12,995. And I'm not picking on Leica here, or suggesting <laughs> Leica's optics are lacking. Focusing on any lens at f0.95, and these are all manual focus lenses, puts a strain on anyone's eye. TD Artisan has a line of full-frame lenses, including a f 095 m mount that can be adapted to a number of cameras, including Z-mount, that I believe uh, debuted a year or so back. This latest super-fast edition hits the shelves this month with mounts for Sony E-mount, Fuji X-mount, Canon M-mount, Canon RF-mount, M43 mount for Olympus, Panasonic M43, Leica L-mount, and Z-mount. That covers a heck of a lot of cameras. And it's selling at the moment for $218 US. That's about $275 here in Canada. Let's get a few more of the specs out of the way. Of course, 50mm f0.95 to f16, all the way up there. Clicked aperture adjustment with intermediate clicks from 0.95 to f4, and then single clicks up to 16. It has 10 diaphragm blades, and we'll see how that affects bokeh shortly. The close focusing distance is not that short, 50 centimeters or 19.7 inches. The optical design is made up of eight elements in six groups. It has a 58 millimeter filter thread. The lens comes with a sort of retro screw-in lens cap that, while it looks kind of cool, um, it's not really that practical in use. The lens doesn't come with a hood. So, <laughs> allow me to introduce another third-party solution that I picked up at my own expense. The Ciotti lens hood fits the TT Artisan lens and the finish, it turns out, is really a, a perfect match. And it comes with a pop-in lens hood that's more user-friendly. And it even comes with a little tether and a lens cloth. Unfortunately, it introduces a fair bit of more vignetting to the lens, which already exhibits its own share, as we'll see. And it becomes sort of denser at higher apertures. No fault of the lens, obviously, but this particular hood isn't ideal <laughs> for the purpose. Even a thin protective filter adds a tiny bit of vignetting, which is strange for a 50 millimeter lens. I also picked up another stepping ring. Here we go. And um, I, I like these, um, what, are they, what are they called? Um, Amopofo, strange name but uh, the threads are very well machined and this will be absolutely essential to use with this lens at wider apertures in daylight for stills and even more so for video to adapt my neutral density filters. As I say, this is not by any means an $8,000 knocked and TT Artisan have not taken advantage of that big 55 millimeter Z mount. Obviously it's not engineered specifically for the Z mount or FX. It's adapted to all the aforementioned mounts after all. So can this APS-C lens really be used with a full-frame camera? I compared results between the Z6 and DX APS-C Nikon ZFC. First, without getting into the debate about equivalence, this 50mm lens on the DX camera equals around 75mm, and we'll see that obvious difference at once as well as the effect on depth of field for a given aperture setting. But here's the comparisons, and it's clear that on the DX ZFC, the corners are much cleaner in terms of vignetting and focus falloff. Results with the Z6 show that um, those effects don't really clear up significantly until we reach F4. I used auto ISO for these tests, so you're going to see some noise in the smallest aperture shots, particularly at F16. I didn't apply much in the way of corrections, except a bit of extra saturation. I felt the ZFC files needed to match those from the Z6. And there's a bit of color shift over the exposures. 
I'm not sure if this was due to changing light because I used a set white balance. So what you see here is what you get. I also took the lens and full frame Z6 to a nearby location that often yields interesting images from people to uh, art and wildlife. And sometimes all three merge. <laughs> this lens definitely made me see things differently. I kept it at uh, f0.95 for nearly every photo, except once or twice when I grabbed the aperture ring instead of the focus ring. These were all handheld and focusing on the subject, especially at close distance, of course, is not easy, especially with my already blurry eyesight. Focus peaking that the Z6 and Z9 includes was really essential to help with focusing. And a tripod would have made things even easier. But I really enjoyed the more contemplative experience that comes with manual focus, like I do with my 1980 Nikon FM film camera. I don't recommend this lens <laughs> for birds in flight, but if the wildlife in question are um, stationary, you can see that there's considerable vignetting and softness in the corners that shows up clearly in bright areas like the sky. Again, this isn't easily controlled, at least not completely, in software like Lightroom or Photoshop. Whether you like this or not is a matter of personal taste. As a friend and camera store staff member said to me yesterday, he's a diehard film photographer and darkroom technician, I almost always burn in the edges of a print. So it depends on your style. Definitely vignetting and pronounced softness in the corners. This is an effect that admittedly is not for every situation. But I found myself uh, creating around these what might be generally considered flaws influenced to create images I might not have seen through other lenses. And I like the results. I think they exhibit what the Japanese call wabi-sabi. The lens really benefits from a bit of contrast. It makes colors pop, as it does with any lens, really, in the situation. And colors here are nice. We've been trapped under a layer of gray cloud, as you saw in the other pictures, for what seems like months Indeed, it's been a miserable spring here in Canada, or at least the West Coast. So, lucky for this review, the sun did manage to burn through the clouds this morning, long enough for me to spend an hour at the wild bottom of the garden, where poppies and every other kind of plant, endemic <laughs> and introduced, fight for space with the Himalayan blackberry, <laughs> the ultimate armed invader. Most of these are again shot wide open at 0.95. Thank goodness, this time for a tripod, a 5-inch monitor screen, as well as focus peaking and enlargement of the subject on the screen. Even so, trying to focus on a subject at 0.95 in the wind is a challenge to say the least. To my mind, this lens really lends itself to video. Again, not for every use case, but it produces a look that many video makers might be interested in adding to their repertoire. The slight crop of external 10-bit recording from the Z6 to a Ninja 5 eliminates most of that corner softness and vignetting. And if we add further letterbox cropping, well, it looks pretty decent. For 8K recording, if I was going to crop on a 4K timeline, well, here's the result of that experiment. Again, focus peaking in camera or on the uh, Animus Ninja 5, really assists focusing at wide apertures, not to mention tripod support. TD Artisan have done an excellent job of reverse engineering the Z mount. It goes on smoothly and seats with no apparent uh, play between body and lens. As mentioned, there are no electric contacts. As we've seen, at its widest aperture, it is decidedly soft, even in the middle, like a lot of so-called bokeh monsters. Barrel distortion is quite pronounced here, and so is chromatic aberration. So what use is 0.95 with this lens? I think the bokeh, or the overall look, can be used to create a kind of dreamy effect, for sure, for a certain kind of portrait. Certainly no need for any kind of soft focus filter. Lens flare is present, but not unpleasant, or I think unusual, what one would expect in a test shot right into the sun like this. 
When it's not appreciated, that aftermarket hood will be a welcome addition if you can deal with the extra vignetting. For video, I'm pressing my matte box into service, which works fine. Again, the stepping ring lets me use a variable ND filter in the box. And as far as video, there is some focused breathing to be seen here. We saw plenty of vignetting, especially when used on the full frame camera. It's obviously much more pronounced than with APS-C. But I think it's fair to say that this can become a feature of sorts, for example, in those flower shots where I'd likely add vignetting in post. So this lens, I'd say, can open up some pretty creative options if you want to work within the obvious limitations. It's the opposite of the kind of clinical rendering that comes with many of the latest lenses that I know a lot of people don't like, especially for portrait and cinematic video, such that there's a blooming market for black promist filters and the like. I use them on occasion myself. And I hope you can see from this video, the lens is definitely well built, better than lenses that cost many times its price. Focusing is smooth, and though the range is somewhere around 160 degrees, not a great deal of throw, I found it to be precise because of the finely tuned resistance. As far as the optics go, which is ultimately what creates the image, it has a lot of what would traditionally be regarded as flaws, especially at its widest aperture settings, which is kind of what a lens like this is all about. But I think it redeems itself not only with regard to affordability, it's a bargain at the price, but also as a creative tool, like another brush in your quiver. Stick around to the end for more shots with the lens. I still have to learn how to work more intuitively with its idiosyncrasies, but I will be carrying it in my bag and I'll reach for it for both stills and video when I feel or see an opportunity to add some of that dreamy atmosphere to a scene. Would you find a, a use for a lens like this? What do you think of the results from the Nikon cameras, full frame versus crop sensor? Let me know in the comments what you think. If you found this video useful, please do give it the old thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss new content. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Cheers. We'll see you later.